One of the lessons of the Four Noble Truths is that we suffer largely because of the way we talk to ourselves. And we can learn not to suffer by learning to talk to ourselves in new ways. This point applies especially to the question of right effort or persistence. You look at what's required by the path, and all you can see are the dangers. All you can talk to yourself about are the dangers, or the difficulties, or the hardships, or the things you're going to miss as you practice. You're going to make yourself miserable, and you're going to make it hard to practice. You're going to make it hard to put in the effort. If, however, you can see it as something enjoyable, as an opportunity to explore, as an adventure, talk to yourself in that way actually makes it easier. That falls in part of the definition of the strength of persistence, which is that you generate desire. You learn how to make yourself want to do this. And one of the best ways of wanting to do something is to see it as enjoyable. It's like learning a musical instrument. One way to learn it is to get a teacher who slaps your hands with a ruler every time you make a mistake. Doesn't allow for exploration, doesn't allow for playing around. You're going to hate the instrument. If, however, you have some time to explore, and this is a lot of what meditation is, you're exploring on your own. It's like taking a guitar into your room and shutting the door and just strumming as you like. After a while, you get tired of random strumming and you try developing new techniques, new melodies, new chords, new progressions. You find that you master the scale and you put in the effort without thinking about it as effort. The same principle applies to the meditation and applies to the practice as a whole. If generosity comes with difficulty, if virtue comes with difficulty, goodwill comes with difficulty, look at it as a challenge, look at it as, as, a, as an adventure. You're going to try something new. And you're going to learn to see satisfaction in seeing your stinginess fall away, or the carelessness that would get in the way of virtue. You see that fall away. The part of the mind that says, why put in an effort? Just put in a minimum, what you can get by with. That falls away too. That's probably the biggest obstacle in the path. The attitude, well, just enough to get by. We may not come to the meditation consciously with that attitude, but if that's the way we live our lives, it's going to creep into the meditation as well. So the various skills you have around the house, the various skills you have at work, look at them as opportunities to master something, to do something well. And that attitude will then spill over into the meditation, animate your meditation. They've done studies of people who are really skillful at something we're talking about, not just being good at something, but being especially good. And one of the requisites is that the skill that they're mastering, whether it's surgery or a sport or a musical instrument, captures their imagination. The problems involved capture their imagination. And they go beyond just the problems that have been pointed out to them. And they go looking for problems to solve. That part of the mind that likes to explore, likes to figure things out. That's the part that's going to get you going on the meditation and getting you to 
be willing to make more of an effort without thinking about it as being an effort, without it, thinking about it as being onerous. So come to the meditation with an attitude of play. Look at John Lee's descriptions of breath meditation, and you'll see that he plays in many ways. He works with the breath going down the spine. He works with the breath going up the spine. Works with the breath energies going around in circles. The breath energies surrounding the body. These are areas you can explore. For instance, with that energy around the body, there is a cocoon of energy that surrounds the body. And it's related to the way you breathe. It's related to the breath energy in the body. Have you ever looked for it? Have you ever allowed it into your imagination? You can ask yourself, if the breath energy were smooth around the body, what would it feel like? If it were agitated around the body, what would it feel like? Think of it smoothing out. Then think of that smooth energy penetrating the body. Or if there's a pain in a part of the body, say it seems to be a pain in the chest, ask yourself, suppose that were actually a pain in the back. How would that change the way you breathed around it? Or if it seems to be in the back, if it's supposed it's actually a pain from the front. Allow yourself to imagine new ways of breathing, new ways of looking at the sensations in the body and how they're related. Think of it as a game. Now, in the same way as when you're strumming your guitar, sometimes you come up with sounds that don't sound all that good. When you play with the breath, you'll find things that don't really work, or at least may not work for you right now. But you just shrug it off and move on. The people who put the most effort into the meditation as far as I've known them, are the ones who find it a challenge, see it as an adventure. Talk to themselves in a way that makes it an adventure, rather than a chore. And that's how they're able to put out the effort, without its being a chore. So look at how you talk to yourself. Talk to yourself in a way that's encouraging. As for the things you miss in life as you practice, or if you look at your life as a whole and say, I wish my life were like this, like that, just drop those thoughts. They're not your friends. They get in the way of playing the hand that you have been dealt and playing it well. Because all of us have potentials good potentials from our past. If we didn't, we wouldn't be here meditating. So focus on those. Focus on the opportunities you do have, and be happy that you have those opportunities. It's not the case that conditions will always be right to meditate, but the conditions are right now. So look at that as a wide open opportunity. And the persistence and the effort and the exertion will come on their own.